Hi, welcome back to our channel and we are continuing our discussion about exploring the BJT, MOSFET, JFETs and uh, their physics and their circuit configurations and in previous uh, module we discovered how the hybrid pi model of a BJT can work, help us to do the small signal AC analysis and we also saw the H parameter model. And then we derived the gain of the circuit. Uh, we derived and we saw that how BJT acts as a uh, voltage controlled current device. Essentially in the books uh, that I have read and uh, the literature I came across, people used to call it, and people still call it the current control current device. However, in the model, We've seen that uh, you can see right here in this model right here, there is this current source that is IC that is equal to GM times VB. And this VBE is the voltage drop across the base emitter junction. So essentially you modulate, you change the VBE, you change the IC, right? Because the IC is equal to GM times VB. So this is your uh, voltage controlled current source, VCCS. But so from this model, we see essentially see that BJT is uh, your voltage controlled current device. However, there is a term called beta, uh, which is IC over IB. And uh, we know that uh, the IC is equal to then beta times IB. So when IB changes, your IC also changes. And IB is essentially getting modulated due to modulation in the VBE. There is a diode equation for the BJT uh, that describes the relationship between your IB and uh, VBE. Uh, so uh, we leave aside that discussion uh, we can say that sometimes for a small signal AC analysis, we can also represent BJT as a voltage control current device. At least the model on your screen suggests that. But now our discussion is to talk about building uh, some circuit, designing them and uh, analyzing them using some circuit simulator. So right now we have already seen the theory of the common emitter configuration. It is called CE mode. Why CE? Because emitter here is common with respect to base and the collector. So this is your input side of the circuit. This is your output side of the circuit and voltage is applied between base and emitter creating a drop across this small signal AC drop that is VBE, which actually give rise. This applied voltage V in is actually giving rise to the base current that flows through the transistor terminal. So actually we can say that it is a voltage controlled current device and that current then flow, flows through this resistor RC. Uh, develops the voltage V out. So V out will be VCE, or you can say that V uh, plus, which is a power supply minus ICRC equal to V out. And the output side is your collector to emitter, which is your uh, voltage drop across the collector and emitter. So now you see here, we have uh, seen the basics of uh, this circuit like uh, common emitter circuit and this is biased uh, for the NPN mode. So this is uh, NPN and we haven't described the biasing details about we just connect the power supply and uh, we haven't set the DC operating point of the circuit. So this transistor circuit will act as a voltage amplifier. That is the first point will give us the gain, voltage gain V out over the V in and take a magnitude of it. Uh, so, and then we with this uh, magnitude, you can actually take the plot, the body plot uh, with this one in decibel, you can uh, get this gain plotted as a function of frequency. Now, uh, it also provides you a high current gain. So in it can act as a voltage amplifier, it can act as a current amplifier. So dual advantage 
you have with this uh, circuit configuration. Now it has a medium input impedance. Uh, so we see that there is a resistance between base and the emitter. Okay, that when the through which the base current IB flows. Okay, and uh, that resistance uh, resists the current flow through the base and emitter junction, and that resistance is usually uh, medium range. So from the model we have seen this resistance. This is that resistance R pi. You see in the previous one, and the value of that R pi is of course the ratio of input voltage divided by input current, keeping the collector to emitter junction open, and that is uh, a function of thermal voltage, which is your uh, 25 millivolt at the room temperature divided by the DC bias current. When you set the operating point with the transistors so in the transistor circuit, you will have a capital. IB, which is DC bias current or quiescent current. And it is also expressed as you have a data sheet referred to that the beta value of that transistor and divide it with the transconductance. So, and then plug in that value when you simulate your circuit. So right now we uh, we say that, uh, so this will be specified. We'll see what parameters are specified in the SPICE model when we'll pick up the transistor. So some this lecture is gonna be perhaps a little longer. So stay tuned and stay attentive for more details. Now it has a very high output impedance. High output impedance uh, right now from the collector to the uh, collector to the emitter, there is RO that RO comes in parallel with RC, approximating the equivalent resistance will be again RC, okay? So uh, we'll, we'll draw the small signal model of this transistor in a moment. Uh, and finally, you have this uh, 180 degree phase shifted uh, inverted output. From the small signal, we'll see that V out will be negative of your parameter, we'll see that. Okay, so V out will have a negative. So you have at the input, uh, at the input you apply a sinusoidal wave and at the output you have a sinusoidal wave but a phase shifted, 180 degree phase shifted, that is inverted. There is a drawback of this uh, circuit and to circumvent that drawback, you have little modification uh, of this circuit. We'll see that what is the drawback and how that drawback is elevated through the comma modification. Like what we do, here's the difference between circuit number one and circuit number two is that you have this small resistance from emitter to ground. So it's basically to increase the linearity of the circuit and the stability of the circuit, which this circuit is uh, prone to. So uh, we'll see in a moment how you can actually uh, try to uh, get uh, the design both of these circuits, simulate the performance and see the gain and the DC operating points and then some other details, uh, frequency response and all that. So before that, let me draw a small signal model for this circuit. So it is, we know that you have a base terminal and then you have, let's say, uh, R pi. We are drawing the hybrid pi model. This is like a uh, hybrid pi model of a BJT, which helps us to do the small signal analysis. And this is like emitter. And the voltage across the R pi will be a small signal input voltage because you apply this external source. So there is a drop here, VBE. Now you have this current control uh, control source, which is your IC. And it is equal to GM times VBE. And then you have this collector. Okay, and now we, we when we do the small signal analysis, usually you uh, make this voltage supply uh, to zero, you short it, okay, and the current sources are open uh, and the voltage sources, voltage sources are short circuited. So when you connect this to ground, this RC from the collector, you see that this is uh, going to be grounded right here or emitter to the terminal, right? 
So let me show you how we have uh, drawn this circuit. So right here to the common emitter terminal. So we'll see that we'll draw that. So this RC, and then you have this, like uh, this is your source and this is your emitter. And now you have this output impedance also, that is uh, your RO. Uh, so in parallel with the RC and RO, we will see now what is the gain. So the output, which is this at the collector with respect to emitter will say that the output can be negative of this current will flow the parallel combination of RC and RO. So it would be you are uh, in parallel with RC in parallel with RO times uh, IC. And that is how you derive it. So it would be minus IC, RC in parallel and IC is your GM times VBE. And therefore, VO upon VBE would be minus RC. Oh, not, not like this. Minus of RC in parallel with RO and uh, times GM, which is approximately equal to minus GM times RC. So now you see the gain. This is your gain actually, okay? That's your gain. Is a strong function of the inherent uh, intrinsic parameter of the BJT, which is drain, uh, which is your transconductance, your GM, okay? And uh, we have seen that what is your GM? GM is basically your IC over VBE. So output current divided by input voltage is your transconductance. So GM is um, is prone to uh, you are we'll see that in a moment gain is a strong function of both uh, temperature and the bias current because with the temperature and the bias current your gm uh, which is a transconductance is likely to vary and therefore the gain is going to vary okay so therefore uh, stability is another problem with this circuit Okay, uh, it also has low input dynamic range. Uh, so this is uh, input, this is imposed by a small signal limit. Uh, and uh, there is a high distortion if you exceed this limit. And the transistor ceases to behave like its small signal model. So when you apply the sinusoidal signal around its DC operating point, you don't really have a large swing uh, of, for the input. So dynamic range is limited because uh, that's your small signal limit that is imposed by small signal limit. And if you actually try to exceed this uh, dynamic range, you have a high distortion in the output. Okay, and uh, transistor no longer behaves as a small signal model. Then there, to circumvent this issue, there is this modification. What you do from this circuit to this, you have added a small resistance RE here in, between emitter and the ground. So instead of shorting emitter directly to the ground, you add the emitter. So because of that, we see that with the small uh, signal model, we can actually draw that. A small signal model will be then from emitter let me draw that. Then from emitter, you have that resistance. And then you have this uh, ground here. And that is your RE. Okay. And now if you take the gain of this uh, uh, gain of this circuit, you will derive this expression. The gain V output divided by V in. Your gain of this circuit of this circuit, which is initially minus GM times RC, it gets divided by the factor one plus GM times RE. And uh, if you assume that GM times RE is very, very greater than one, then finally your gain, which is small signal gain AV, uh, gets 
to the minus RC over RE, so which is set by the resistor ratio. Instead of uh, it is set by the transconductance uh, in the circuit number one, in circuit number two, we see that uh, your gain is no longer dependent on the intrinsic parameter, which is GM of the transistor. Rather, it is set, it is a function of just resistors and the ratio, set the values of the resistor. And uh, since it is a ratio of resistors, you have it, uh, you have a control over that. So, uh, adding an emitter register decreases the gain because your original gain decreased by this factor, one plus GM times RE, but it increases your linearity. It means you can have a large uh, dynamic range of your signal for the input and then accordingly large output swings is possible. So we'll see that, we'll actually verify that. And then, uh, you have stability also relatively, your circuit is relatively stable. Okay, so that's the end of the theory. Right now, we will focus on building this circuit. So we'll build this basic circuit first and then we'll uh, see how it behaves. But now we'll need to take the values of RC, uh, values of input and output uh, accordingly will be simulated. We'll run the DC operating point analysis and then we'll run the transient analysis and then we'll run uh, AC response. So let's check that out. How we do that. So let's uh, try to build that circuit uh how we want that right so how will we do it do we know uh how we are building that circuit let me draw that first here so here it will be a circuit let's say you have this uh, power supply and then you have this resistor rc then you have this bjt and collector emitter and the base you have connected input voltage and then output. So your base is here. Now you see that uh, there'll be a voltages and the currents here. So with V in, you have this drop VBE. There is this output voltage VCE. There is this current that is going to flow is IC is around the operating point. Is that our circuit is? Yes. Uh, and here is your output we have taken. Let us try to build this circuit. So what we'll do, we'll pick up the components. We have opened the circuit simulator. Uh, just uh, from the library, we'll look for NPN because that's what we want. And we have that. Then press escape from your keypad on the laptop to get rid of that. Then click uh, register here. You have register. That's it. Press escape button. Then you have a ground. So just connect right here. And then just uh, wire them up here. And then here. Now what you want, press space bar from the keyboard to fit the schematic on the screen. What you need a voltage source, uh, two voltage source. So we'll just type voltage and here it is. So here you have, let's say voltage and there is second voltage right here. So one is for the power supply. So we'll just click here and then maybe connect this, this one. And then this net, we'll call it like here and keep it like this and label this net. So label this net. What is this net? Is it a port type input output or bi-directional? We'll just say it is uh, your V plus because that's what your input is here. So we'll see here and then we'll keep it right here. Then this V plus will also keep it here and connect this to the other end of the R. 
this is your RC. So why not just uh, give the name to it? That's it. Now uh, you want this input voltage source right here. So how about I drag it and then keep it like this. And I call it like say V in. It has to be, uh, it has to have a DC value. So let me call it V in right here. And then maybe with the ground connections, click here, then click here. And that's it. And you see that maybe I have to a little bit keep it like here. Okay, now your base emitter junction right here must be greater than 0 0.7 to forward bias this junction. And from this node, you want to take the output. So why don't I just add one more net right here and give the name to this net. For example, I will, I will write this as output, uh, label the net. Now I can say this is an output. So V out or simply V O and here I am. Right, press escape. So I said this uh, should be more than 0 0.7. So that's why it will forward bias this junction. And then uh, I have the power supply V plus uh, let's say I keep it 5 volt, for example. Accordingly, the circuit will be biased and I will have output. Before that, I right-click this transistor and see uh, which transistor I can pick up. So otherwise, it just takes the by default. It doesn't have any manufacturer. It doesn't have any open circuit uh, collector to emitter voltage. It doesn't have any collector current specifications are not there. But if I click pick new transistor, then I can take this uh, transistor values, you know, transistor parameters from different. So first one is two and double two, double two. That is like an XP manufacturer, polarity is NPM. This has a maximum collector to emitter open circuit voltage about 30 volt. It has a maximum collector current about 800 milliamps that can withstand and here is the spice model so dot model is the syntax it starts with the number then it is npn then you have like is which is reverse saturation current then you have vaf uh, i don't know what that is maybe one has to refer to a spice model from this manufacturer then bf is the beta factor so it has a gain of 200 so if your IB is one milliampere, then your IC will be 200 times, that is 200 milliampere, okay? And then there are other parameters like uh, capacitances uh, and all so many other things are there. So one has to study all these uh, models. So do you want to take uh, this transistor? There are variety of other transistors also in the model. So depending on which you want, so let's say BC547 is very common. That is 547B, 547C. There are two types. So it has a maximum value of 100 milliampere for the current and the voltage is 45. And the beta factor of this transistor, let me check, is 458 right here. So why don't we just take it? Okay, we'll, we'll select that. Okay, click okay. See the part number is highlighted. Now click the V in, provide the DC value of one volt. Series resistance, of course, it is not ideal voltage source, but we'll just uh, remove that. We'll, we'll just keep that. So one volt DC biasing. So now the base emitter junction is forward bias and your collector current is going to flow from this end. Uh, let me draw it here. So your base emitter junction gets forward bias. Then you have a base current. Then you have a transistor beta that will give rise to collector current. That is IC. 
and IC will be equal to beta times IB. And we'll see, we'll measure how much is the beta and all that. So VBE will be approximately 0 0.7 volt. So we can run the analysis also. And the VO, which is equal to VCE, is just a drop across the collector animator. This is the emitter. This is your base and this is your collector. So it would be VCE, which is equal to V plus V plus, which is this one. Okay, let's write V plus uh, minus IC times RC. So V plus uh, need to give you, for example, if you give it like 5 volt. Uh, let me write. Let's say you have it 5 volt. 5 volt. Right. So 5 volt comes here. So an RC, we haven't given the value to RC. How much you want to give the based on that your drops will be created. So let's say it is 1K and that's it. So let me draw it uh, properly like Uh, uh, rather we'll move it so that uh, no it is like we need to draw or uh, drag it uh, something like this and then maybe like this maybe like this Voila, so is decently connected. How about we do the theoretical analysis of that first? Because we don't know how much is the voltage and the current. So here your VBE will be 0.7. VBE will be approximately 0 0.7 volt. And then your IB, we don't know how much is the IB. All right, and uh, the V in is your one volt, so uh, that's it. We haven't really, and your V plus is five volt, so your uh, VC or output voltage will be five minus IC times uh, 1000 ohm or one kilo ohm. So we two parameters IB and IC are unknown. Uh, yeah, because uh, we don't know. And the transistor beta from the manufacturing sheet is about 550, 458. Let's check out that. Let's, let's check this out. Let's right click here. And uh, you see this uh, maximum 100 milliampere it can withstand. That is a collector current and 45 volt maximum it can have across it. So beta is here 458.7. So we'll see how much is that. So first we need to do is perform the analysis. So I just click the simulation and it is it is opened. Edit simulation command DC operating point. Just click OK. Place it somewhere and done. And you are done. So why not just see the voltages? So the first output voltage is uh, 47 millivolt. 47 millivolt. Oh, or 0 0.00047 volt. Input at the node not not one is one volt, which is I think this one. And then, uh, uh, okay, do one thing. Just right click this net and level this net. This is our base voltage. So let's call it base voltage or just simply saying uh, base and just place it here, base. And uh, let's call it like uh, oh, well, that, that's ground or simply base will be much better. VB. 
and emitter is connected to the ground. So now let's run it. Here we see now the base voltage is one volt and supply voltage is five volt. The collector current is your 4.9 milliampere and the base current is 0.139. Oh, there is something we have to understand right here. Just a moment. Yeah, so base current is your 139 milliampere, which is very high, and your 0. Uh, 0.0004, like 4.9 milliamp, is your collector current. So there is definitely uh, the circuit is not uh, what we expect. And here, if you right click, the so maximum current it can withstand is 100 milliamp here. So how about increasing the resistance RO and then now run it because now you will see the output voltage is like uh, 0 0.04 so it's like 41 millivolt collector current is 49 so there is something uh, problematic going here we are not biasing the transistor in a proper way is that what we expect from the circuit, let me check that out. So, collector to emitter. Base collector junction is reverse bias. Okay. Hi there. So uh, what we have done here, we have increased the supply voltage to 15 volt. We have changed the value of RC 200 ohms uh, and uh, we have just uh, reduced the input voltage from 1 volt to 0 0.7 volt just to bias it. And after that, if we run the analysis, we see that the output voltage is 13 volt which is the VCE. So just two volt gets drop across the resistance RC. So 15 minus two volt will be 13 volt in the output. And then VB is 0 0.7 volt. Supply voltage is 15 volt. Now look at the collector current. It is like 18 milliampere. And the base current is like uh, 36 microampere. So if you want to relate this uh, to your equations, for example, your IC is 18 milliampere and your IB is like 36 microampere. So we can say that beta IC over IB, which will be 18 into 10 to the power minus three divided by 36 into 10 to the power minus six, so it will be like uh, 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 plus 6. So it's like that. So it's about uh, 500 approximately, which is exactly what we want, uh, what we see from the SPICE model. Remember, the beta uh, of that is given about 458. So it is approximately matching to what we calculate. Voila. So that's good. Uh, so this is how your current amplification takes place. So it has a current gain of 458, approximately 500 or something. So that's how we got it. And then the emitter current is same as approximately same as collector current, just because neglecting the base current. Current through RC, which is IC, is uh, 18 milliamp, as I said. Total current drawn from the supply is again same. Uh, uh, the current from the V1 uh, is supply. And then here is your current from the input voltage source supplied to the base, which is uh, negative of uh, 36 micron, which is the base current. So that's good sign that we have biased the uh, circuit in the 
in the mode. So this junction is a uh, forward bias. We'll see that right now. This junction is VBE, your base emitter and the collector. So this is forward bias. And what about this? This is a 13 volt and the base voltage is 0 0.7 volt. So uh, collector to base junction or VBC is about, uh, you have approximate uh, 12.3 volts, right? Negative of 12.3 volts, so which is like VBC. So which makes sense. So act, by biasing the transistor in an active region is important. So for the biasing condition says that your base emitter junction should be forward bias and the collector base junction or base collector junction should be reverse bias. So we got that. So here it is positive 0.7, there it is minus 12.3. Collector is uh, positive with respect to base. Okay. So now what we want to do is uh, simulate the transient response of this circuit. We'll see around this uh, operating point how your circuit works. So we'll do one thing, we'll just close switch off this and then right click, change this voltage source to, to the sinusoidal. Now the DC offset is 0 0.7 volt because that's the bias point of your circuit and around which you have to do your amplification. Let's say one millivolt, one kilohertz, and rest you just keep, we want 10 cycles. So you see, the circuit will work now like this. So we've got this input voltage and now I want to run the transient analysis. So we'll see if it works like that. So what is expected here, I have this input voltage and here is the zero, but 0 0.7 is here. So that's my DC bias point. And after that, I have applied a small signal riding on this, riding on this. So it is like one millivolt peak or two millivolt peak to peak. And then accordingly, I will have the output, which will have like 13 volt. So it was like 13 volt, this is zero. It will be like 13 volt, hopefully. And then you will have the amplification of the voltage. Now, how much is the voltage gain? We have seen that V out divided by V in, which is minus GM times RC. And what is the GM? We, we, we need to calculate that, right? So what was the GM? Let me check how to calculate the GM, value of GM. Okay, so GM will be calculated by the collector current, DC collector current, that is quiescent collector current which we calculated to be 18 milliampere. We simulated that divided by the thermal voltage. That would be value of your GM actually. So let's go back. So here we see that uh, your GM would be IC over VT, which is like 18 milliampere divided by 25 millivolt. So it's like uh, 18 divided by 25, 0 0.12 something uh, amps per volt. That is, we'll see that, multiply it with the 100. So it's like, uh, well, it's about 120 or something like that. So we'll see how much is the output voltage. So through simulation, it's a quick way to do that. So why not just run the transient analysis, simulate, edit simulation command, choose the transient. Here you see your stop time, let's say 10 millisecond, time state 
and maximum let's say one millisecond. So syntax is ready, keep it somewhere here, boom, and then run it. We'll see if it's circuit, how it works. I'll close this circuit. We don't know. tile the windows. Uh, now you have uh, to see the input voltage first. So voila. You see from the 700 millivolt, you are riding one millivolt up, one millivolt down. So that's the DC bias level, 700 millivolt. That's good. And the output voltage would be 13 volt, which is the DC bias point. And after that, you have that signal. So why not just uh, add a plot to pane and keep the input to the up and output. That's good. Look, see. The input is in one uh, input is in the green and the bottom, which is the phase inverted output. And your output is like it starts from 13.13 volt uh, and it goes to 13.07 volt. So let me check. Uh, yeah, that's the output you are getting. So to fit. It starts from 13.13, right? So the DC biasing point, the DC bias point is difficult to set with this particular signal. How about we increase the value of, let's say, from 1 to 10 millivolt or, yeah, 100 millivolt. And then maybe then simulate again. Uh, now you see the output starts getting clipped. Your negative, for a positive half cycle, you have a pretty decent output, but for the negative input, you have output saturating at 15 volt. So that's how you can see that. Okay, the swing. So that's why the swing of this circuit is limited for small, it is no longer working as a small setting model. So right click again, maybe let's say 10 millivolt and then simulate again okay so start from 700 millivolt and on top of that ride a 10 millivolt signal positive and negative up now here you start with 13 uh, volt and then you have 100 millivolt so it's a gain of uh, 10 yeah, so we, we see that minus GM is 0 0.12 multiplied by 100. So that's about uh, 10, a gain of 10. Good. Just a minute. 0, 0 and 0 0.12. So that's pretty good. We have a gain of uh, 12, uh, which is theoretically calculated as GM multiplied by the value of RC. And we see that uh, the input is 10 millivolt and the output is like uh, 120 uh, millivolt. So it starts from 13.1 uh, and then it goes to 12.5. So it's like 600 uh, millivolt. Yeah, 600 millivolt. So gain of six for a positive and for the negative. And then from 13.1 to 30, yeah, 600 millivolt. And the input is 10 millivolt. So gain of like uh, 60, 60. Okay, so we've seen that. How about simulating the AC response of this circuit? Is that possible? Yeah, because we are using the real transistor model. So what we do, we just uh, have to choose this source as an AC source. Click none and uh, AC amplitude one and then click okay. And that's it. You you see now there is like uh, one second. I just uh, do that. 
and now you want to run the AC analysis. So rather you have to disable this command. So just do that with this syntax. Let me get rid of all the drawing here because we don't want this now. So it's clean circuit. Screen is clean and then run AC analysis. Edit simulation command, go to AC analysis. Type of sweep, let's say linear. Number of points, let's say 100 points or 1000 points. Start with 1 hertz. Stop with, let's say, 1 mega. Or maybe we'll say the decade. Click OK somewhere here and boom, we'll see that and plot the output. Yeah, so you, you really don't really have any gain because it's minus 180 dB and all that stuff uh, goes in here for that AC response. You need to understand in more detail, maybe connect the Miller capacitance in the feedback, then only you can see the response. But there is a capacitance of the transistors here. So why not? Oh, well. Okay, so that's all for this uh, one. We'll explore that later. So hope you enjoyed and like this video. We'll see some more details of it later.